one of the biggest reasons why people do fasting is to activate autophagy, burn a bunch of fat and boost stem cells and all those good stuff. Unfortunately, they do say that in order to reach those benefits, you have to be fasting for several days and starve. <laughs> What if I told you that there's a way to speed up the fasting process and gain those benefits much faster? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you how to do that and speed up fasting. But when I say speed up fasting, then I mean achieving those same metabolic effects that you get from the fastest state and activating those faster instead of actually somehow traversing through time and speeding up the entire process and going through it much faster. The idea is to do certain things that mimic the fasting physiology and thus you don't have to fast that long. <laughs> the fast state is distinct from a fed one with many unique characteristics. It happens when you haven't consumed any calories for about 4 to 6 hours and you've digested the food you last ate. Here are some of the hallmark features of a fast state. Blood glucose and insulin levels drop because there are no carbohydrates in the bloodstream. Fatty acid oxidation increases as the body starts mobilizing its own stored adipose tissue for energy. Ketone bodies begin to rise during the process of converting fatty acids into ketones by the liver. This will begin to substitute for the lack of glucose in the brain and other vital organs. Anabolic pathways like mTOR and IGF-1 are suppressed. The body doesn't have enough nutrients to trigger cell growth and thus maintains energy efficiency. Catabolic pathways like AMPK and autophagy are activated. AMPK gets activated under energy stress to promote fatty acid oxidation, ketogenesis, gluconeogenesis, and autophagy. Metabolic factors like PGC1-alpha, sirtuins, foxoproteins, and AMPK increase to promote mitochondrial fusion and biogenesis. Fasting makes the mitochondria more energy efficient and abundant. Antioxidant defense systems get activated like NRF2 and glutathione. They promote detoxification and removal of free radicals. Fasting increases NAD+, which is a coenzyme that helps with all molecular reactions like energy production, mitochondrial function, DNA repair, and lifespan. Generally, it takes at least 20 to 24 hours of fasting to see a significant increase in the most powerful metabolic factors, such as autophagy, sirtuins, glutathione, etc. Shorter fasts, like 14 to 20 hours, are more for just managing insulin and confining when you eat which is more like a lifestyle thing for convenience. Now, there are plenty of things and activities that activate those same pathways and they mimic the same physiology as you would while fasting. Here are a few examples. Exercise. Physical activity lowers insulin and increases fat oxidation. It also promotes AMPK due to depleting liver glycogen, which leads to autophagy. Moderate intensity endurance exercise promotes PGC1-alpha, which builds mitochondria and ketosis. Resistance training has been shown to activate autophagy and reduce apoptosis of muscle cells. The training itself doesn't activate mTOR or insulin, although it makes the mTOR complex translocate closer to the cell membrane, so it could be turned on after you break the fast and start eating. Even prolonged exercise for two hours at moderate intensity has been shown to stimulate the capacity of muscles to extract ketones from the blood. Heat exposure. Heat shock proteins promote autophagy and have neuroprotective effects. Saunas also improve cardiovascular health and reduce all-cause mortality by 13 to 15 percent. Cold exposure, lower temperatures activate foxoproteins that promote longevity. Dietary polyphenols, herbal teas, coffee, dark pigment vegetables, dark chocolate, olive oil, chokeberries, blueberries, and others stimulate autophagy, protect against neurodegeneration, and support the body's antioxidant system. Medicinal mushrooms like chaga, cordyceps, and others activate the NRF2 pathway and can lower adrenal stress on the body. They also promote autophagy. The metabolic state of ketosis, whether through fasting or nutrition, increases PGC1-alpha, AMPK, and CERT1, which causes mitochondrial biogenesis. Ketone bodies are modulated by PGC1-alpha, and they have anti-inflammatory effects on the body. The ketogenic diet mimics a lot of the aspects of fasting. These things that I just mentioned, they mimic fasting much more in a superficial way. They're not going to put you into a fast state and make you feel like you fasted for three days. Instead, they just shift your metabolic gears more towards a fasted physiology and, you know, put you into this experience where you are almost fasting. Wait a minute. But you still need to fast. The only unique characteristic of fasting that you can only get from fasting is the actual fast state and that can be characterized by this suspension in your metabolism and you're not digesting food. Your body is at rest and it's basically completely not stimulated by anything. That's a fasted state. That's a pure fasted state. That's why I believe everyone should practice some form of time-received eating regardless of the diet or goals. 
Studies in mice show that fasting 16 hours and eating within 8 hours prevents them from getting obese and develop hypertension despite being fed a junk food diet. Human studies also show that eating within 6 hours improves blood glucose levels, insulin sensitivity, lipid profile, circadian gene activation and cardiometabolic risk factors compared to the standard 3 meals a day. Fasting for at least 16 hours every day and eating within 8 hours or preferably less is optimal for digestion, circadian rhythms and the body's chronobiology. A daily 16 hour fast is definitely not enough to activate autophagy or these other longevity pathways if you're just fasting and you're not doing anything else for 16 hours. In order to get like a significant amount of autophagy from that amount, they need to apply these hacks that I just mentioned and quote unquote speed up the process so that you get into autophagy faster. Strategery. Now, of course, you still have to do these longer fasts every once in a while. It's just that I think that you shouldn't be trying to put more and more stress on your body and think that more fasting is always the best option. More autophagy and more fasting aren't necessarily always the better choice. And in those cases, you actually want to quote unquote speed up the process and fast less while still being able to reap the benefits of the fast state. If you want to know how to combine resistance training with intermittent fasting and eating the appropriate foods for both goals, then check out my Metabolic Autophagy Masterclass. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered. Yes.